Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another update. In this update, we're going to be talking about snow, some extreme winds, Arctic air, and severe weather as I give you an overview for the next 10 days. So before I do get started, if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media, all right? So let's get started. Let's first of all, let's take a look at the overall uh, wind chill index this morning as of uh, March the 2nd. And definitely you can see some extreme wind chills coming in into New, uh, New, New England where they had that Arctic air plunge in overnight and you really felt it up there. They had some winds kicking at 50, 60 plus miles an hour. And now they're really feeling the wind chills of uh, 15, 20, upwards to 30 below zero in uh, New England. And even in it down here, you can definitely see sporadic throughout the country of some uh, chillier air that's uh, filtered in uh, for March. So let's kind of take you, take you back and kind of give you an overview on actually what happened for the entire uh, winter. I mean, meteorologically, winter is technically from December 1st to February 28th. So we are done, and this is how it ended up being. Um, it was be well below average for a good chunk of the central part of the U.S. Now, that had a lot to deal with that big extreme cold front that came through, you know, for two weeks there, bringing those extreme anomalies. But, yeah, I mean, you can definitely see how the winter played out over those 90 days. We were just a tad bit above average, and these are the means between the highs and the lows, a little bit above average in California, Nevada, and parts of uh, the Pacific Northwest, but definitely below average in the midsection of the country. And then we were a little bit above average in Florida and uh, Maine. So overall, we were fairly cold. I mean, we were definitely one, about one and a half degrees uh, below average for the entire United States. So if we take a look at the overall anomalies for February, and you can definitely see some of the extremes. I mean, 11 below normal in Dallas. I mean, we're talking 14 below normal in Oklahoma City. I mean, that's some of the most extremes of, for the entire part of, area of the country. I mean, you were a little bit above normal in California and Nevada and getting into uh, Arizona. And even Florida missed out on the, on the Arctic air. But overall, February was a very cold month for the United States, even getting down into the Southeast, got uh, a, a piece of you know, those below average temperatures as a whole over those you know 28 days. So if we take a look at the overall snow over the last, uh, just for the entire season, you can definitely see there's a lot of paint on this map and a lot of places have picked up, you know, well above average normal snowfall for their, what they normally see on an average year. Uh, the only places that really hasn't seen any snow is well down here to the south into extreme uh, portions of the southeast, uh, getting into Florida and uh, much of much of Georgia and the Carolinas. Uh, but overall, I mean, a lot of you guys have seen snow and some of you guys have picked up 50 plus inches of snow up here in uh, New England. So let's take a look at some of the wind gusts that actually happened overnight and going into uh, later on this morning because those heavy wind gusts in New England continue uh, to pump in with that Arctic air just kind of pour it in from the north. So we're still seeing some 40, 50, upwards to 65 uh, wind gust and uh, parts of uh, Maine that'll be uh, later on this morning so those those higher wind gusts definitely continue and those those actually continue even on into the afternoon so they really don't let up uh, anytime soon they do subside a little bit as you get into uh, Philly and Jersey and parts of uh, New York City but still 20, 20 30 mile per hour wind gusts but so some of those extreme wind gusts will start to you know creep back you know over uh you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, especially getting into Maine. So it is a definitely very windy day uh, for you guys in uh, New England uh, up there. So now let's take a look at some of the anomalies is what's going to happen over today and of course the next uh, 10 days. So as we look at uh, this afternoon's uh, anomaly temperatures, you can definitely see where they've had those clouds and some of the rain that they were impacted in Texas and much of the south they're getting those below average temperatures uh, hanging on for today. And obviously up here in the, in the, into the Ohio Valley, getting into the Northeast, where they had that Arctic air. So you'll still be looking at 20 plus degrees below average temperatures later on today. 
and those other extreme anomalies where you saw all the arctic air just in february now you're just the opposite of having 20 30 degrees above average temperatures to parts of uh, the dakotas getting into the midsection of the country and the above average temperatures for the pacific northwest getting into uh, california and as we take a look at some of the wind gusts tomorrow for New England, those are still pretty high, but they definitely calmed down a lot from what you saw on Tuesday back to more moderate levels of 20 to 30, you know, 30 mile per hour wind gusts, but still fairly high as you're going to be dealing with that, um, you know, just a lot of, a lot of wind from, from the previous day. So, but they definitely subside, but as we kind of traverse throughout the week, we get into Friday, we're gonna be watching these troughs that come in down from the south and lift up to the northeast. So predominantly a little bit further south as we get into Friday, Feb uh, March the 5th, we see these below average anomalies in parts of the o Ohio Valley getting into uh, portions of the southeast. And then again, still a below average temperatures for much of New England still into Friday. So you still hang on to those below normal anomalies most of the week and those extreme temperatures just the opposite is for the pacific northwest where you kind of heat up into washington and oregon and, and uh, idaho where you've been dealing with a lot of snow and everything out there and that'll moderate a little bit as we go into uh, friday and as we kind of take you into the weekend and you can definitely see those extreme anomalies i mean this is typically what you kind of see in march where you get those you know 10 15 20 degrees below average temperatures for the southeast and new england and then you have above average temperatures just the complete opposite so you have a lot of extremes depending on where you live uh in the country so that has you know it's going to continue to play out by sunday march the 7th as these below average temperatures creep in for much of the south and the southeast getting into new england and then well above average temperatures hanging on for much of the week for you guys into uh, parts of the Dakotas, into Minnesota, getting into uh, Wisconsin as well. So, and as we kind of take you into Tuesday, next Tuesday, March the 9th, so you can definitely see it's going to be well above average for, for the, you know, parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota for a good week. Uh, but we find we do see some colder air penetrating back into the pattern in the Pacific Northwest as that PNA goes back negative. And now you'll see in those below average anomalies creep into California where those have those 10 uh, to 15 degrees below average for you guys coming up in uh, California by next Tuesday. And those ex those higher anomalies start to creep back into uh, portions of the south and getting into New England, where you saw just the opposite, you know, 10, 15 degrees below average. Now you're seeing 10 to 15 degrees above average by the time uh, Tuesday rolls around. But as we get into Wednesday, this is where things kind of get interesting uh, next week. We can definitely see some much colder air penetrating into the Pacific Northwest. And you get those extremes. I mean, we're talking anywhere from 20 to 30, almost 35 degrees above average. And so, yeah, so when you see these extremes like this of a good 50 degrees difference in temperature anomalies, that typically sets the stage for uh, a severe weather um, outbreak. And so I'm looking at some sort of a clash. You know, when you get these clash in temperatures like that, yeah, this is definitely a favorable pattern uh, going into the second week of March that we could be dealing with uh, some severe weather as we get into uh, the midweek next week and then beyond. So, and even some of the uh, uh, latest kinetics that I'm kind of looking at even this far out by the 10th and 11th time frame, right around that where they have that, you know, clash in temperatures, we could see a line of severe thunderstorms start to kind of break out in the, the midsection of the country and then kind of traverse across uh, from west to east as we go from midweek into uh, into the weekend. So that's definitely something I'm going to have to be taking a, taking a look at as we get into uh, next week. But if we kind of break it down over the next uh, 10 days, here's kind of give you an overview and how what you know kind of what to expect. This is from now, March the 2nd to uh, Sunday, March the 7th. So the next five days, you can see the temperature temperature anomalies is just about average here in uh, Texas with a little bit below average getting into portions of Houston, uh, get into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, much of the southeast, into New England, into the uh, Ohio Valley with those below average uh, temperatures. And then, you know, 
for the midsection of the country and especially in U.S. North, north central part of the U.S., you see those above average temperatures in much of the Dakotas, Kansas, Nebraska, even parts of Missouri, you know, above average temperatures for the next uh, five days. And then if we take you beyond the, 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 the next uh, five days, those, here's your snow for those five days. I mean, so there's the, the, the pattern definitely kind of relaxes a little bit. All that snow gets lifted off into the northeast, and this is between now and Mar you know March the seventh. So you saw those above average temperatures. So there's not much snow to be working with. You are going to get some snow in some some of the higher elevations, you know, over the next five days. And here's your uh, precipitation you're going to be working with over the next five days, as far as uh, you know uh, 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 anomalies go. Uh, you can see where those systems traverse across well down to the deep south. You see those above average uh, precipitation and parts of, uh, you know, getting into Alabama and Georgia, parts of uh, South Carolina, as well as uh, Florida. But overall, even with the precipitation, it definitely kind of relaxes from what from what we've seen, at, you know, as of late. And but the next five days, that's where it kind of gets definitely you know more interesting for the next five days. So now, you know, instead of these below average temperatures, we're seeing those above average temperatures for a good chunk of the central U.S. and the eastern two thirds. And then we see that colder air uh, come into the mix. This is from March the 7th through March the 12th. We see that colder air come to the mix into the Pacific Northwest, especially as we get into California, as we get, get those, you know, very colder anomalies in the Nevada, get into Oregon again and Washington into Idaho. And that's going to bring a lot more snow uh, for uh, the Pacific Northwest uh, as we get into those, you know, those next five day anomalies where, yeah, I mean, you can definitely see a lot more snow uh, gets into the mix into the Pacific Northwest of anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 inches started to fall in much of Washington, you know, Oregon and to the mountain regions of California and to Nevada, uh, Colorado, you know, into the four corners regions of Utah, you know, Mexico, Arizona, and uh, Colorado as well, and Wyoming is going to be getting in the mix, and Montana, and then where where you're not going to be picking up those, uh, you know, above average temperatures, that that snow line traverses well to the north into uh, the into the into the Dakotas by then, where they you know where they had those above average temperatures, that you start to creep in a little bit below average by the second second week of uh, for, the, for the next five days, and you'll start to see some snow uh, creeping back into the mix and here's your precipitation uh for those uh the the next five days over the next 10 days you can definitely see where they it's kind of highlighted here with those above average anomalies that typically kind of signifies where these severe weather setups might come into play so i'm definitely looking at possibly by midweek into uh, into possibly next weekend of uh, this area of the country uh, could be under the gun for uh, severe weather. So that's something that we're going to be have to take a, a take a look at and uh, keep you guys uh, forewarned on that. But yeah, your wind gust over the next uh, 10 days. I know a lot of people travel. There's a lot of truck drivers that follow me. A lot of people just need to know the winds in general of some of the highlighted spots over the next uh, 10 days and you can definitely see where we see those clash in temperatures where typically where you see those extreme clashes in temperatures that's where a lot of the higher winds are going to be picked up as well those isobars kind of really tighten up with temperature gradients and you can definitely see where anywhere from 50 60 almost 70 mile per hour wind gusts in parts of the four corners regions uh, getting into uh, you know Kansas, Nebraska, and parts of the Dakotas. So these are the areas that you're going to have to be uh, kind of on the lookout for as you're getting into these parts of the country as some of those higher winds that you're going to have to be dealing with and where they're not having these temperature classes and more of an extremes down here in the southeast, you can definitely see the winds are much lighter uh, for that uh, part of the country. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. I hope that helped and kind of gave you an overview of the next uh, 10 days and how this is actually going to play out and kind of what to expect. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.